This presentation discusses heinous acts of violence that may be disturbing to some viewers. Viewer discretion is advised. Serial murder occupies a rather unique métier within the criminal justice community that has caught the attention of investigators across the world. The media, mental health experts, researchers, academia, and in more recent years, the overall general public. Although research on serial killers has continuously progressed over the last half-century, we still do not have a complete understanding of what makes a serial killer a serial killer. So, what social? psychological, and biological factors contribute to serial killings? According to the American Psychological Association, a serial killer is an individual who repeatedly commits murder, typically with a distinct pattern in the selection of their victims, method, and location. The FBI describes serial killings as a series of three or more killings with common characteristics that suggest each killing was committed by the same individual. The United States Department of Justice defines serial killings as crimes that occur over a period of time that ranges anywhere from hours to years, and oftentimes are driven by a motive or motives that are psychological, with sadistic sexual overtones. Understanding the difference between a serial killer and a mass murderer is critical in research on serial killings. Although mass murderers will have killed more than the required amount in a serial killer classification, the criteria differ significantly. According to the FBI, 2010, generally, mass murder was described as a number of murders, four or more, occurring during the same incident, with no distinctive time period between the murders. These events typically involved a single location, where the killer murdered a number of victims in an ongoing incident. Although Caucasian men are arguably the most common, serial killers have proven to be male, female, and of many different ethnicities. Richard Ramirez, who killed 15 people, is Mexican. Moses Sithole, who killed 38 people, is South African. M.G. Shankar, who killed 19 people, is Indian, and Charles Ng, who was convicted of killing 11 people but believed to have killed 25 people, is Hong Kongese American. Although female serial killers are less common than male serial killers, they certainly have made their way into the population group. Leonardo Cianciulli was an Italian female serial killer who killed three elderly women and used their remains to create soap and bake tea cakes. Juana Barraza is a Mexican woman who killed 48 people. Aileen Wernos is an American woman who killed 13 people. Myra Hindley was an English serial killer who raped and killed five underage children. While many serial killers may appear to have that creepy look that so many expect in someone capable of the heinous behaviors exhibited by serial killers, the reality is that many of them look just like you and me. If not for their infamous reputations, most would not suspect these faces to be responsible for things we have come to know. Many serial killers do have mental health disorders but this is not the case for all of them. Due to a lack of documentation in numerous past serial killers, we will likely never know whether or not every serial killer known to have existed lived with a mental health disorder. Examples of serial killers who did not have a mental health disorder documented include Charlene Williams, Nanny Doss, and Judias Benoano. It's easier to believe that serial killers are sexually driven evil geniuses than it is to believe that they are human beings with different levels of intellect and different nightmarish tendencies. Serial killers come in all shapes and sizes, from all types of backgrounds, upbringings, and social classes. Not all serial killers have high IQ scores. Not all serial killers are sexually driven. And, not all serial killers want to be caught. Rather, some may want recognition for their work. Which can lead to mistakes being made, and ultimately to their capture. Many serial killers have below average IQ scores, are not sexually driven, and have never indicated they wanted to be caught. There are four types of serial killers. While some serial killers may fit into more than one category, they are primarily identified as being a power and control killer, visionary killer, mission-oriented killer, or hedonistic killer. Each type is identifiable through the motivations of the serial killer. Power and control killers are motivated by sex, gaining power, and the satisfaction of having complete control. 
These killers are calm, meticulous, patient, and may have feelings of inadequacy or immense fear of rejection. They will fantasize about power and control over their victims, desire to dominate their victims, and may keep souvenirs of their victims. Ted Bundy, one of the most infamous power and control serial killers, admitted to stalking, kidnapping, raping, and killing 36 women. In 1980, Ted Bundy told journalist Stephen Michaud about his overwhelming fear of rejection and his desire to seek revenge on his ex-girlfriend, Diane Edwards. I had this overwhelming feeling of rejection that stemmed not just her, but everything. The tail end of that summer is really a blank. I mean, it was a nightmare for me. In there somewhere was a desire to have some sort of revenge on Diane. Inner demons drive visionary killers. They are motivated by the belief that their actions are dictated and commanded by another person or entity. These killers are disorganized and psychotic. Their victims are random, not planned or targeted according to a type or preference, and they put in little to no effort to cover up their crimes. David Berkowitz, aka the son of Sam murdered six people and wounded seven more between 1976 and 1977. In a 2017 CBS interview with Maurice Du Bois, Berkowitz explains that he killed in order to appease the devil. I thought I was doing something to uh, appease the devil. I'm, I'm sorry for it, but I, I really don't want to talk about it. Anymore. Appease the devil? Well, I was, uh, at this time, I had, uh, was serving him. You know, I was... Uh, Serving him, I feel that he had taken over my mind and body, and I, I just surrendered to those very dark forces. I regret that with all my heart, but you know that was like 40 years ago, and I understand that it was a, a demonic thing, and uh, you know I just opened myself up to some very dark forces to come in, and, and I can't, you know. Change. Mission-oriented killers target specific groups of people, such as sex workers, a specific race religion, or sexuality. These killers are in touch with reality, don't typically suffer from delusions or hallucinations, and tend to believe their murders are a favor to society. They are organized, planned, able to blend into society, kill quickly and efficiently, and may avoid close contact kills. John Wayne Gacy, aka the Killer Clown raped and murdered at least 33 boys and men from 1972 to 1978. 29 of which were found buried beneath Gacy's Chicago home. Despite his 1978 confession and irrefutable evidence, Gacy refused to publicly admit his guilt. People don't want to know the truth and the, and the honesty of it. If they want to be convinced or brainwashed into what they believe, then fine, then go ahead and kill me. But vengeance is mine, say it the Lord, because you will have executed somebody that didn't commit the crime. Hedonistic killers are categorized as lust, thrill, or comfort. Lust killers rape, kill, and mutilate for sexual gratification. They fantasize about violence, struggle with impulse control, prefer close contact with victims, and will use their hands or a knife to kill. Thrill killers are excited by murder have feelings of inadequacy and powerlessness, enjoy the hunt, get off on victims' fear, and lose interest after the kill. Comfort killers seek financial gain, avoid close contact, oftentimes use poison as their kill method, are not excited by murder, and take no pleasure in it. Their murders are a means to an end. Jeffrey Dahmer, one of the most infamous serial killers, raped, killed, and dismembered 17 men and boys from 1978 to 1991. Dahmer was a sexual sadist, necrophiliac, and cannibal. In 1994, Dahmer told Stone Phillips that his crimes came from lust. But uh, there is a big element of wanting complete control over someone, total control, uh, not having to, to consider their wishes being able to keep them there as long as I wanted, and uh, that, that was a big part of it. Lust played a big part of it. Many researchers, including myself, 
strongly believe that serial killers are a product of both nature and nurture. I strongly believe that a combination of social, psychological, and biological factors come together and significantly influence the lives led by serial killers and the crimes they are infamous for. Social factors are general factors concerned with social structure and social processes. Examples of relevant social factors include family relationships, home environment, bereavement, and socioeconomic status. Psychosocial factors refer to any exposure that may influence a physical health outcome through psychological mechanisms. Examples of relevant psychosocial factors include stress, heart disease, depression, hopelessness, and hostility. Psychological factors refer to individual level processes and meanings that influence mental states. Examples of relevant psychological factors include mental health issues, personality characteristics, personality disorders, early development, traumatic experiences, and salient life experiences. Biological factors refer to our genetic makeup and anything physical that can cause adverse effects on mental health. Examples of relevant biological factors include genetic influences, prenatal damage, brain defects, brain injuries, and substance abuse. Serial killers carry great value in the world of psychology. Criminological psychology focuses on the criminal mind, criminal behavior, and what factors contribute to criminal thoughts and actions. Serial killings are some of the, if not the, most baffling criminal acts society has had thrust upon it, of which are driven by obfuscated motivations. Understanding why they do what they do is a complicated process that will require continued research that specifically addresses psychological contributors to human behavior and the correlation between human behavior and life experiences. Through this research, the potential for developing early intervention strategies, and the potential for a decrease in future violent crime significantly increases. The crimes committed by serial killers impact not only the victims and their families, but society as a whole. The impact is catastrophic and long-lasting. The general public has seemingly developed a somewhat distortedly glorified fascination with serial killers and the crimes they are famous for, but not necessarily what factors contributed to the paths walked by serial killers, leading up to those crimes. My research findings, and the findings of past research, can contribute to not only the understanding of the individuals who commit violent crimes, but potentially reduce societal fear of violent crime caused by stigma and the media as well. Serial killings have been a focal point in the criminal justice community for over half a century. In recent years, the media has grabbed a hold of the growing societal interest in the infamous acts and stories behind serial killings and shined a very bright, and oftentimes, very distorted light on serial killings. Despite the many years of research, investigations, and the more recent attention from the general public, there are gaps in research on serial killings. One of the greatest gaps is the sample size and diversity of participants. The majority of verifiable research on serial killers focuses primarily on male serial killers. Female serial killers, although far less common than male serial killers, have made their way into society as well. While we can connect the sociological, psychological, and biological factors in serial killers by simply studying male serial killers. The inclusion of female serial killers in these studies is critical in determining the actual significance of these factors. Throughout my research, I have noticed a common focal point. Research on serial killers appears to focus on the perception that serial killers are primarily sexual sadists. I believe that this is a gap that needs bridging. While many serial killers are sexually driven, my research has taught me otherwise. The lack of attention on non-sexually motivated serial killers is noteworthy.